1884-85, Giuseppe Ferrata studied piano with Liszt in Rome. While walking with Liszt to attend Mass, Liszt said to him, Many students of the piano run up and down scales for hours a day, thinking they will reach the heaven of technical attainment. But athletes develop their muscles and get resistance and control of them by exercise based on sudden contraction and expansion. These principles should also apply to students of the piano, who should formulate exercises based on sudden expansion and contraction of the muscles of their arms and hands. Welcome to my tutorial on Chopin's Etude Opus 10, number 4. <laughs> That's to say, sometimes the best place to start is the end. Perhaps you'd like to play this study, but have so far been put off by the formidable sight of that jumble of semiquavers and accidentals over six long pages. Perhaps you've listened to recorded performances and assumed that bravura closing section on the last page must be just too gruesomely difficult to play and have a life. These musical fears, understandable as they are, will soon fade away when you see for yourself how straightforward and logical the ending actually is. Once you see the underlying sequential pattern for yourself and find you are able to play it, then you'll surely feel confident about the rest, which is logical and a little easier. So, let's play. Notice the right hand plays the same pattern comfortably inside a sixth and it just repeats descending a semitone at a time. Once you've got the feel for the shape of just one group of four semiquavers, you've got the best part of the whole of the last page. Staying with the right hand, Put each group of four semiquavers into a chord and practice moving your hand as little as possible, up or down, backwards and forwards. Less is definitely more when speed is going to be a consideration later on. <laughs> 